We took Starlink way offshore. So welcome, this isn't one of our standard episodes. I'm just making something separate, smaller, talk about Starlink specifically. And maybe I'll do these every once in a while to talk about some different systems on the boat. I just wanted to share our experience so you can be more knowledgeable and you can have you know, more information going into it. So we actually purchased Starlink back when we were in Baltimore and we were using it on the dock because the dock Wi-Fi just wasn't great. Um, we also had at the time a T-Mobile hotspot, so we're using that as well. We no longer have that. The performance from Starlink means that we don't need it. Um, and then the offshore performance of Starlink means that we don't need Iridium Go necessarily. We took Starlink way offshore. Um, we ended up about 700 nautical miles offshore, I think was the greatest. You know, when we left the US, we thought that Starlink would stop working once we got into international waters. We'd heard different things from different people. Um, you know, when we crossed an international, we were like, okay, it's gonna stop working now. Then we're like, okay, well, maybe it'll stop working at 50 nautical miles out. So we are currently how many miles offshore? Uh, about 42. 42 miles offshore and enjoying Netflix. Thanks, Elon Musk. Thanks, Elon Musk and Starlink. Oh, maybe it'll stop working at 100 nautical miles out. Maybe it'll stop working at 200 nautical miles out. But it did not. I'm just chilling. Yeah, watching TV. So it just kept cranking. We had great internet the whole way. I was able to, you know, when you're not on watch, just binge through, you know, some Netflix way out there like the the speed was great predict wind we didn't have to deal with using our iridium go to download grip files which takes forever um, so we wasted some money on the iridium go i would not i don't think i'll do that again i might do it as a backup for a long passage you know maybe if we cross the atlantic or something i'll i'll activate the iridium go just in case you run into any starlink issues or you know anything else happens I and mean, we can always grab the iridium go bring it into a life raft you know we have epervs and things but you know the more the better when it comes to that kind of thing. So really more for an emergency situation, hopefully, than for just standard sailing. Like being able to use Predict Winds cloud service is way better than just downloading those grip files. It lets you, you know, we were able to go through and try different scenarios and look at you know, different options and jump through different apps. Um, so the safety is definitely better. For working on the boat remotely, it's a total game changer. Like going from country to country, not having to deal with going and hunting down a SIM card or being disconnected during passage. And that's a really big safety thing for us is that last year in the Bahamas, we mainly had to move the boat at night, which is nowhere near safe because you can't really see you know, into the water to see if you're gonna run into a reef or something like that. So you just have to totally rely on your charts and move at night. And that was so that we could have internet during the day because in between islands, a lot of times cell service just wouldn't be there. With Starlink, that's not really a concern. I mean, I, I did phone calls 700 nautical miles out. It sounds like you're just on a regular cell service. In Dominican, we were at, at the dock and everything worked great. You know, we actually shared our connection with a couple other boats that were docked near us when they needed internet because the marina internet didn't really reach out to the end of the dock. Can't recommend Starlink more. Like it is a total game changer. You know, hopefully they'll keep up letting us use the RV service because you know, I don't think any of us really can afford to use the marine version, right? 5,000 a month is no joke. I think, I think we're within the intent. Like maybe they'll deal with it. One way they could approach it is with caps maybe. So they'll, you know, maybe we have one terabyte caps today. Maybe the marine version has, you know, 50 terabyte caps or a hundred terabyte caps or unlimited. Um, you know, I think from a safety perspective, Starlink's providing us all with much more safety than we had before even compared to like Iridium Go and things. And I hope that, you know, just with that in mind, they'll keep an affordable option for us sailing. All right, so I'm at the helm and right above me is where the Starlink dish is installed. Uh, we have the in motion dish. It came out right after we got our standard RV dish. Um, it was literally the day we received it in the mail, the new version came out and I was, I was like, no, I need to switch this. So I sent that one in and ended up with this one. So as you can see, there is no pole mount coming out of it. Um, and interestingly enough on Kelpie, which is a Neil 51, it fits perfectly in our Bimini frame. Like I don't even have any kind of mount to secure it. Just the pressure of the Bimini itself from the bungees on the side, hold it perfectly stable. Um, somebody wondering like, how does it work under a Bimini? Cause I did too when I installed it. Um, I did a lot of testing outside the Bimini and under the Bimini, 
and there was not a performance impact. If you go on the Starlink app, it shows that there isn't any um, there isn't any interference. There's nothing, no obstacles in the way. So that that uh, eased my mind. It protects the dish, which probably isn't important. I mean, things made to be outside, and there really wasn't anywhere else to mount it. So I, you know, I can walk you around the deck, show you some other positions that I considered, but all of them had way more obstructions than this. This is as far aft and out as we can get. We're behind the standing rigging, we're behind the mast, we're behind the head sails. So the other position I consider was forward and had a lot more obstructions than where we are right here. And so what I did, what I did here was run the wire from, from the Starlink dish around the bimini and then down and I installed and I, and I installed this, C, this blue C through port. So this is a wide angle view up from the dish, from the center of the dish. So you can see there's really not for, nothing for obstructions. Okay, most boats have installed Starlink. Most boats have installed Starlink in this similar position as far aft and out as they can get. So forward here, this is another position I consider was in front of these solar panels. Um, you know, there's a couple issues here. One, the dish itself could create some shade for the panels, although it would sit pretty low with the mount that's provided with the in-motion. Um, I don't think it would be ideal. I didn't want to put it any more forward because we have a pretty wet deck, so I just want to avoid you know, getting a lot of water on it as much as I can, even though you know, it's made for it, but still, it's salt water and has a way of wrecking things. So I'll give you a view of this. This is a view up from the forward position I considered for the dish. As you can see, there's way more obstructions here than in the position that I ended up mounting it. So I think that, you know, under the Bimini was a perfect solution for this. So if you like this, uh, make sure you like down below, subscribe. I know you can check out our regular episodes along with these little tech inserts that I'll do. If you have anything else you'd like me to cover specifically, you know, mention it down in the comments. If you have any other questions, put them down in the comments. I'll make sure I come and answer them. But yeah, it's great. Great seeing you guys today.